uh, before Hogan can really get into get in too deep into what he was here for Paul Heyman and Barack Lesnar interfere, uh, interrupted him but Hogan did say that he until he revealed that he was the one who was behind it or helping it or administering it he endured something very similar to what is going on right now in WWE to what happened in WCW when the, the when the NWO first got underway and he offers this advice to the talent backstage there's power in numbers then that and that brings out Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar as Paul Heyman tells Hulk Hogan there might be power in numbers for normal people. My client, Brock Lesnar, is not normal. He is a beast. And he is capable of destroying anyone that is put in front of him. Now, Hogan. You need to take your own advice, or you should have taken your own advice and brought some numbers because this isn't your show anymore. This isn't your company, and this isn't your ring. This is Brock Lesnar's ring. And you need to get out before my client makes you leave. Well, that didn't sit well with various, various people, including the big show who runs in and chases off Brock Lesnar, saving Hulk Hogan from any serious injury or for that matter, Brock Lesnar even laying a hand on the hoaxster. But the uh, tension between Big Show and Brock Lesnar doesn't seem to ever want to not exist, as it's almost been existent between those two for 12 long years and it seems like it's coming to a head once again. Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, uh, the announcers discuss what we just saw between Hulk Hogan, Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman and the Big Show, and what this could mean for later tonight when Mr. McMahon reveals who Brock Lesnar will face at TLC. And speaking of who somebody will face, last week we saw it. Last week he won the Fatal 4-Way match to become number one contender for the IC title. And Titus O'Neil gets his title shot, but comes up short against The Miz here tonight on Raw as The Miz retains the Intercontinental title. But, you know, everybody knows The Miz. He can't keep his mouth shut and following his victory against Titus O'Neil Miz uh, grabs a mic and starts bragging that he is the most must see WWE Intercontinental Champion in the history of this company and is going to be the one who brings meaning and importance back to the Intercontinental title it is some and that is something that Dolph Ziggler can't do, that is something that Titus O'Neil can't do, that is something that, um, Mark, Han you know, he just keeps naming people because it takes an A-lister to make something mean more, and that's what I am. And it doesn't take, well, it didn't take much, but the, 
But that's what it takes, or that's what it took, rather, for The Miz to get Dolph Ziggler to run out and chase him from the ring. Dolph wants a piece of Miz's ass, and wants a fair chance against the Intercontinental Champion to try and get his title back. But, you know, everybody knows, when you face The Miz, the last thing you're gonna get is a fair chance. But now we move backstage where Mr. McMahon is with his brother, his son-in-law, and daughter. And he tells Triple H and Stephanie that he is going to handle Brock Lesnar himself tonight. But he tells, and he tells them that what he just saw, what he just saw with Brock Lesnar and Hulk Hogan makes him want to say this, that Brock Lesnar will be competing tonight on Raw against the Big Show. That's right, Brock Lesnar is competing tonight on Raw against the Big Show. What? That's not supposed to happen. Um, where's the match? Um, well, I apologize for that. Uh, I don't know where... Dean Ambrose versus Goldust is. Go, Dean Ambrose, well, long story short, Dean Ambrose is supposed to verse Goldust. And then following his match against Goldust, he comes out, uh, grabs a mic following his match, and calls out Kane. And Kane comes out, and here's, and now I caught you up. And this leads to a back and forth between Kane and Ambrose, where Kane, uh, Ambrose is basically calling Kane a lapdog and saying that his family, that his brother would be ashamed to call him his brother because of what Kane's became, because even Dean Ambrose used to fear Kane, but now the only thing that fears Kane is his shadow. And, Dean, and Kane tells Dean to watch his mouth because he doesn't know who he's messing with, and Dean makes a joke something like, uh, He's messing the only person that came, the only person that Dean is messing with is Seth Rollins's bitch. And that leads to Kane making a match for SmackDown between Brock Le uh Kane himself and Dean Ambrose this Thursday on SmackDown. And uh the announcers discuss how Dean Ambrose worked to get under the skin of Kane to get in the ring against the Big Red Machine this Thursday on SmackDown. And now we move backstage where Hulk Hogan is with the trainer and Big Show into, uh, enters the uh, locker room and basically tells, asks, sees how Hulk's, Hulk's doing and Hulk tells Big Show thank you for having us back. And says, and asks Big Show if he wants Big Sh if he wants Hulk at ringside for his match tonight against Brock. And he tells Hulk, "No, you've done enough. After all you've done for me, I owed you this. Now let me take out, take care of the beast tonight." And now we move to the next match, which is the Wyatt family against. Heath Slater and Jose Maximo, I guess you could say the Wyatts are getting a squash win as pretty easily and academically the Wyatt family defeat the Jobbers and then Bray grabs a mic and I give and this is where I give the Wyatts free roam free roam to do and say what they want and the mysterious promos are becoming a little clearer but the subject of the promos still remains a question and remains a mystery who is Bray talking about and what is he going to do to the person and why is he talking about them and now we move back to the broadcast position with Michael Cole and his cohorts as they as they uh, announce that Christian and the that we will be seeing 
the return of Christian and Christian's peep show this month next week on Raw with Christian's guest, the chairman of the board, Mr. McMahon. Uh, I'm sorry, scratch that. The uh, he, His guest will be the undisputed future of WWE. That's right, Seth Rollins will be his guest next week on Raw. And now, to everyone's surprise, a sudden tune jumps in the uh, goes over the PA system as Common Man starts playing. Dusty Rhodes makes his way down to the ring and makes an introduction that only the American Dream could make as he introduces NXT Superstar, the man who will make your back crack, liver quiver, knees freeze. That is Sami Zayn. As Sami Zayn makes his debut tonight against Fandango, and Sami is victorious in his WWE main roster debut. And following the match, he and Dusty celebrate a hard-fought win for the, one of the top prospects in WWE. And now, we move on to the next match. If you remember correctly, last week you saw Mark Henry against Kofi Kingston. And Mark was victorious, but the victory was tainted following an attack by the New Day. And now... Um, and now, Mark Henry faces off with the New Day. Yes, smart, it's a smart athletic friends. Well, you forget this, um, season, or database rather, is from November 2014. Smart athletic friends, I would wager to assume, was the original name of the New Day before the New Day was given their name. So I'm going to change that before my next show. Uh, but either way, the New Day is victorious against Mark Henry. It seems like the numbers game is playing into the field, is playing to the advantage of Kofi, Xavier, and Big E. And now we move back to the broadcast position where JBL praises the New Day and Michael and Booker question if the New Day is only having somewhat success due to their numbers advantage. And JBL basically puts over the fact that numbers a number numbers advantage doesn't mean a damn thing. It means all that matters is wins and losses. And now just as Michael is ready to jump in, he says that uh he's being told something's going on backstage. Uh uh, uh, uh and we gotta get a camera back there, and we get a once a camera is able to see what's going on. We see a big, a brawl going on backstage, and the four and between the tag team champions Goldust and Stardust and the Usos, as a brawl is, uh, has broken out backstage, and it's taken and a host of road agents and staff have to pull them apart, but it takes a a while for the for the four, for the two teams to be pulled apart and it just shows the tension between the Usos and Golden Stardust that did not subside following uh the uh recrowning of the Uso, of the Golden Stardust as tag team champions and now we move back back to the ring with Natty and Alicia as Natty uh, works again. Uh, I apologize. Um, as Natty is in compet is in com is in the ring again. If you can't tell, Natty is one of my most uh, popular divas to book because I'm pushing her. I'm pushing her because. I feel like that's something that WWE is losing out on by not pushing her. So I'm doing the opposite. I am pushing her. Um, don't pay much of attention to this match uh, 
other than that. Now you move backstage with the authority and the big show. The big show says, whoa, 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 before you get started, I don't want no trouble. And I want to know why you're here. And Triple H and Stephanie come right out with it and say that we're here because we want to give you a pat on the back for what you did earlier tonight, helping Hulk Hogan and making sure that that mercenary Brock Lesnar did not do anything to Hulk Hogan because Hulk Hogan is a legend in WWE and doesn't deserve to be treated the way Brock Lesnar was treating him. And we have also decided that since Brock Lesnar has not defended his WWE World Heavyweight title and they put up the, you know, the air quotes, hasn't defended his title in over a month, we have decided that you will be getting a world title shot tonight. Because one reason and one reason only, and that is you're the only one left to get a title shot. And even if he tried, even if we tried to vacate the title from him due to inactivity, he wouldn't give it back. So we're making him defend it against you tonight. So get the title back for the WWE. And now we move after somewhat of a mysterious and intriguing backstage segment with the authority on the big show. We move back to the ring where Joe Hang is in the ring against, is ready for his match against... Justin Gabriel and Joe Henning wins his first match since Jeff, uh, Ric Flair became his manager, uh, which is cause for celebration. But everybody knows Flair does not celebrate in the ring. But um, you got to start slow, and that's what I'm doing with Joe Henning. One match does not mean a damn thing, at least right now. Now we move back to the broadcast position where a video where they set up the where they set up the introduction to uh, a training a video highlighting the eventual return of Roman Reigns. And now we move back to the ring where. Rusev, who has lacked pretty much any direction thus far this year, or this season, and as Rusev goes up against one half of the Matadors in uh, Fernando, and wins pretty easily and pretty decisively, and exactly what I just said about Rusev not having any direction, is to a point what Lana says earlier uh, following the match, as Lana and Rusev are inter are in interviewed by Byron Saxton, and Lana basically says that Rusev's talents are being wasted by the WWE because they are not, they have no one left for Rusev to destroy, to crush, and therefore Rusev has made the decision to go back to Bulgaria and will return to the WWE once the WWE has people to face my Bulgarian brute. That doesn't it, uh, that's all it took for Stephanie McMahon to make her presence felt in front of the ravishing Russian and she tells Lana that if Rusev wants to go back to Bulgaria, he can do so, but he must leave the WWE United States title here and will be unemployed because WWE tells you when you 
can take a vacation, you don't tell them. And if Rusev wants to go back, he can go back. But he will go back as an unemployed Bulgarian brute. So make your decision, Lana. You want him to go back, he will go back unemployed and titleless because those two things stay here in the good old U.S. of A. Well, Stephanie, why not make my client worth while then his stay here worthwhile then and don't worry Lana things will be changing for your client if because if you haven't realized we have some things going on right now including our client Seth Rollins getting abducted last week so we have a lot on our plate right now but you will get what you want very soon. And now we move to some Divas action as AJ Lee and Tamina team up against Naomi and Summer Rae. And AJ and Tamina are victorious. Following the match, AJ calls out Natalia and basically is echoing the same thing she's, uh, that Nikki said to Natalia following Natty's match last week against Summer Rae, but, but AJ says that she is not the embodiment of what a WWE diva is because she never modeled. She never walked down that runway. The only runway she walked down is the runway at ringside into a wrestling ring and not into a bigger runway. She was never modeling the next designer outfit. The only, mo the only thing she models is her Chuck Taylors that she has on her feet. Natty, Natty and AJ, or AJ says Natty and her are very similar because we, they don't look for, they don't depend on their looks to get further in this business they depend on their skills in the ring to get further in this business and that is the opposite of Nikki and that is why they are not the embodiment of what a WWE diva is they are the embodiment of what a woman's wrestler is and that is why the divas title may not fit Natty. And Natty is just with a puzzle. She doesn't know what to think. She's got a puzzled look on her face. She just looks at AJ, points to her title, and says, either way, it's still mine. But anytime, anywhere. So AJ and Natty, AJ, uh, scratch that, I'm sorry, Natty lays out the challenge to AJ anytime, anywhere for the WWE Divas title. Ignore that. What? And now, what you heard earlier in the show happens. Brock Lesnar versus The Big Show. Brock Lesnar versus The Big Show for the WWE World Heavyweight title. And Brock Lesnar, pretty obviously, is victorious against the world's largest athlete. But, following the match, Brock Lesnar, I mean, following the match, Mr. McMahon makes his way down to the ring. But... Well, this happened. I told you I'd be back. I told you I'd be back. You like what I did? You like what I changed? I said that I'd be back, and I am. You think, Vince... You think you know what's going on. 
boy, are you wrong. You haven't the slightest idea what's going on. But what you do know is that someone is out to get you. I have changed the game before. I am going to change the game again. And there is nothing that anyone can do to stop me. Seth Rollins thought he would be in my way. But that wasn't the case. Now was it? Seth Rollins, John Cena, Big Show, Randy Orton. The list goes on and on and on. Nothing will change. I will make things happen. And no one can stop me. <laughs> Till next time, I'll be back, I promise. And you won't believe what I do next. And now we are back at the broadcast position. It's different than SmackDown. It's different than what happened at SmackDown because the hacker gave it back. Mr. Mc, uh, Michael Cole, JBL, and Jer Booker T try and make sense of what we do what just happened, but they can't. They don't understand what just happened. All they know is somebody is trying to get Mr. McMahon's attention. Somebody is trying to get it the attention of the WWE universe, and somebody is trying to change WWE. Now, we move forward. For once, for once, look at that. 76, it increased our popularity in 19 regions. Duh. I'm not going to say that my direction is starting to have a positive effect. I'm just going to say that starting right now, tonight, this might be where everything changes and everything starts going my way and starts uh, heading towards the direction that I want WWE to go, or I think that WWE should go. <clears throat> if you liked this hack better than SmackDown's, let me know in the comment section below. Also, let me know what you thought of the show, what was your favorite part, least favorite part, and what do you think you could have done better. All that and more down in the comment section. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like or comment or don't forget to leave a like or subscribe to the channel for more content just like this that you can only find right here at Wrestling Express. Till next time.